You know, every time I eat something in Malaysia, it's like it wakes me up, a part of me wakes up. Assalamualaikum and welcome back to a new video. I am on the streets of Kuala Lumpur in Kampung Baru and we are getting some fresh mangoes. This area is actually uh, known to be like a village type looking area and it's very different to the rest of Kuala Lumpur. Uh, majority of the population here, 35,000 people are Muslims and uh, the village is around like 100 years old. Kampung Baru means new village. And we're going to walk around, I'll show you some of the houses here. Uh, we're going to visit a mosque and we're going to also go and try to get some food. There's a lot of street food options here and majority of food is halal here because majority of people are Muslims. So as you can see, there are a lot of options here uh, for food and things like that. There's normal grocery shops, but there's also things like um, cut up pieces of fruits and pickles and stuff like that, ready-made food, but there's also a lot of fresh food around here as well there's a lot of restaurants selling traditional Malaysian food and if you look around there there's also a lot of shops selling things like durian and that's one of the things I'm excited to try um, I've actually had durian before but I've been searching for durian for quite a while and I've not been able to find it so yeah these restaurants here just they don't look that busy right now but we are gonna walk down to get some durian first and then after that we'll try to explore some of the houses around here because they're architecture of these houses are quite different to what we'll find around other parts of Kuala Lumpur. Some syrup I think it is. Pendon, ah okay. Sweet corn. And I think we're waiting for the actual durian piece now. Alright, there it is. This is the one this is the one thing I've actually been looking forward to, the durian piece, so the other stuff is a bonus. Look at those good pieces of durian on there. Put some Santan. Sun Santan. Santan. Mm. Tasty. Place on this nice plate. Awesome. So we sit around here. So you can see the preparation seems quite complex. But once it comes in front of us, amazing. Thank you so much. Here's the durian and some noodle stuff down here. Some nice milk, some ice. Um, yeah, I'm just going to dig in because this stuff looks really good. So, yep, uh, this comes with a, a big spoon because there's a lot to eat here. But I, I think from everything, I'm most excited to try the durian because that seems like the most interesting thing. And that's the thing that's actually famous in this part of the world. So the rest is just bonus for me. So let's give that this a taste test that is immense and also obviously very similar to jackfruit so durian I think is quite different to the normal jackfruit that you have that you can get access to in the UK this one is a lot creamier has a very soft texture it's incredible very very sweet a perfect post dinner or pre-dinner dessert if you add it with the actual ice and the milk and the sweet corn and everything it actually gives it a very complex yet very interesting taste so in Malaysia and in this part of the world they actually love to uh, infuse things and twist things up by adding all these extras so that it gives things an extra punch. We bought these mangoes before. I'm gonna give that a try now after trying the durian. Amazing. You know, every time I eat something in Malaysia, it's like it wakes me up, a part of me wakes up. The fruits, the spicy food, the desserts, the teas, 
First time trying mangoes in Malaysia. And words can't describe how fresh it is. So yeah, I'm gonna finish up here with my mango and with my durian, durian. And then we're gonna head off and go and check some of the houses out before the sun sets and it gets dark. One thing I should mention that all these restaurants and street food stalls that you see around this area they are actually all by the local residents so none of them are outsiders or from here to work every single stall here and everyone who's actually got a restaurant or anything like that here lives uh, in this very area so they're very proud of that fact as well so the area is an enclave as they call it which is basically like it's just populated by Malays and the vast majority of the people here are actually Muslims as well so yeah they've kind of like this is like prime development land the government they're after this piece of land it's, it's estimated at around 33 million dollars very expensive and they want to make it more like kind of corporate environment so you can see the kind of the commercial buildings and I think you can get a view of Petronas Tower somewhere here the buildings actually loom down on, on this area um, which is very contrasting and the colors as well that they use in these houses are quite incredible and so one thing I have to say about this area is that the area is incredibly kind of strange to see when you're walking around Kuala Lumpur it's quite it's quite amazing actually how they've retained this villagey type look feel um, despite it being bang in the middle of Kuala Lumpur a lot of people don't actually know about this area because they head off to places like uh, uh, KLCC and KL Central and you know like the bird park etc so this place goes largely ignored but I really feel like in the next so many years the place is gonna sort of disappear I hope it doesn't because it really is quite a difference to what you see in um, other parts of uh, Kuala Lumpur so as soon as we came in with that taxi driver here I could feel the difference uh, in terms of the vibe here and the kind of uh, the environment here is really really different and so yeah um, it's nice to come here I've, I've been to Kuala Lumpur before it's my second time last time was in November 2015 and I absolutely had no idea that a place like this exists so I'm gonna turn left here because it looks very interesting and uh, if you watched my videos before then you'll know that I've got a uh, fascination with places like this and I like going to see my oh, I'm gonna show you something which is very very strange okay so that there over there those buildings those two twin towers those, those two towers it's actually known as Petronas towers and I'm sure more of most of you know that it was once upon a time the tallest uh, twin tower buildings in the world I'm not sure what the situation is right now uh, if they even uh, are classed as the tallest twin towers in the in the world right now but um, it's so strange to see them looking down over this area really bizarre so let's walk down here and see what we can find otherwise we'll turn around but yeah you can see like it just feels like I'm in I'm in a village right now but the only thing that makes it different is the fact that you know you see all these uh, tall buildings around and everything so yeah I think I'm gonna turn around because we've come to the end of a block but look at these houses amazing ah uh, oh, very nice very nice uh, english you speak english oh, all the way around like this. This way, this way. Ah, jalan, jalan. Jalan ini di Pak. Ah, masjid, masjid. Ah, jangan lupa di masjid sini. Jalan jamik masjid. Ah, okay, sini ada. Ah, jalan sini. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. Oh. Ya, 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 ya. Tapi pak, terus. Ah, close, close, close. Ah, okay, okay. Jamik, jamik masjid. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Ah, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. So yeah, so I didn't really have a, I wasn't really asking them any questions, but they were kind, very kindly, and explaining to me which way to go because it's kind of closed off over there. And so we're walking down. It's around seven o'clock. There's about 15, 20 minutes left till uh, Maghrib Salah, till sunset. And so for that reason, it is becoming incredibly busy. And so it's very gentle here. Like even though it's very crowded and very busy very gentle There's, you don't hear any horns or anything like that uh, so 
so yeah, there's a, um, I've been told there's a lot of street food stalls here. I think we just find one here right now. So they do all sorts of food. They do Western food and then they do like street food as well. Oh. I think these are some, I'm not sure what these are. Some fish being fried here. So I'm uh, just looking around. Yeah. Is this fish? Fish? Uh, yeah. Ah, you do all different seafood? Seafood? Uh, and lamb. Lamb, seafood and uh, halal, everything halal. Yeah. Oh, there's the seafood here. Thank you. There's the seafood here. I actually prefer places like this that are selling food like this in comparison to like really classy areas. Feels like there's more life in these places. I feel like people kind of like have more, like they have the attention to give in comparison to like if you go down towards the areas where in the center. So as you can see up there, it says Kampong Baru. Kampong Baru. I think it says it in like Arabic as well. And uh, yeah, basically this is probably the kind of area where Kampong Baru starts, I'm assuming. But of course you'll find different entrances around this area. Um, it's quite a thing, they're quite proud of this area actually. I haven't seen many neighborhoods in Kuala Lumpur having their own kind of entrance. Anyways, I think we're supposed to turn left for restaurants and right for the mosque. So we shall turn right first and then we'll come back down. We have satong, which is octopus, katam, which is crab, udang, which is prawns, and ayam, which is chickens. Tako yaki. You can see it's very, very busy here. Very busy. People selling all sorts here. Uh, and they've got all this, like, I think this is like called satay, where they like kind of food on sticks here, as you can see. All this chicken. Salam. <laughs> And uh, yeah, you've got all this fish, chicken, meat, fish. prawns, prawns. Ah, bida. Ah, bida. Ah. <laughs> so I'm not sure what he said, but very friendly people. And uh, you got chicken down here, meat down here. I think that's fish as well. Satay. Name is satay. Satay. Satay padang. Satay pagan. Padang, padang. Padang. Ah, satay padang. 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 Name of shop. Satay, name of food. Ah, uh, so satay is basically you get food on sticks. Probably you open after Maghrib, I come here. Inshallah. Thank you. Really, 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 really. Really. <laughs> so we're gonna head down here before we head to the masjid because the adhan will be going up in a little while. And we're just gonna see the rest of the food stalls. There is of course the issue of uh, hygiene and things like that, so at your own discretion, man. That's just how it is. back at our satay place and we picked up some of these sticks stick food satays so i'll give this a try we just picked up one each one beef and one chicken oh. change one ring it one ring it only one ring it one ring it one ring it ah so this stick food is only one ring it that's incredibly cheap one ringgit. Ah, sate oh. minang. Sate minang. Sate minang. Ah, sate, chicken sate. Minang. One minang. Mina. Ah. Mina. One ringgit for this, which is around twenty pence for a stick of chicken. <laughs> Very cheap. <laughs> Doesn't really taste flavoursome this one as much as the beef one. Ah. I'm not being rude or anything, but that sate that we had was not good at all. It's probably one of the worst things I've tried. The chicken had no flavor whatsoever. And uh, yeah, the chicken had no flavor whatsoever. And the meat was good, but it just felt like it was like quite a few days old. But you know, I'll tell you one thing. 
if you don't see a lot of people going towards the stall, especially when there's a crowded place, it's probably because it's not good. That's just my opinion. So we finally found a restaurant and this one is actually called Chop and Steak. And I think they specialize in grilled food and the restaurant itself looks like a boat and there is actually a boat there. So it's got quite a, a trendy atmosphere inside. So let's head inside and have a look to see, see what it's like. That's the kitchen over there, it's all the cooking going on. All right, so the food is here now and we're gonna dig in. Let me just quickly show you what we've got. Here we have some of the grilled food. We have king prawn at the top, some chicken, and also some beef there. Oh, no, that's not beef, that's actually lamb. Then we have some beans here, a nice piece of bread, some mashed potato, some salad, and then really nice cheesy nachos here. And to wash it down, we've got this melon juice drink with ice. Awesome. So we're gonna dig in, um, see how this food goes. Hope it's nice. And I'll see you guys in a little while. So just to give you a little review of our food, right? So the food is nice. But it's not the best. So starting off, the nachos has got a very kind of... I don't mind that it's got this, but it's got this very kind of like a Malaysian inner taste to it. Now, the reason why I have an issue with that is because when you look at the beans or the mashed potato, it seems kind of like very Western, right? And then all of a sudden, right, you've got this with the na na nachos with uh, the Malaysian kind of uh, fillings. And then when it comes to the grill stuff, now the grill stuff is best when it has very less toppings but I feel like the, the, the lamb here and the chicken is almost uh, flavourless and we did have the one king prawn but even that felt like it was kind of lacking flavour. It's nice food but um, would I come here again? No, would I recommend it? Maybe not but I can't say that this place is not good because I haven't tried everything on the menu so you know unfair to say that but I would say one thing that they're trying to I think be a little bit kind of Western with the dishes here mixing the Malay and the Western kind of cuisine together interesting it's tasty it's a good meal value for money maybe not is it the, really good is it worth coming here I don't know I'm not gonna say yes or no all right so we've just come out of the restaurant now and uh, my honest review there were not empty plates by the end of it. The food was all right. I'll give it like a five out of 10. It, the, whole, the entire bill for all that grilled food, the nachos, the two drinks came up to around 53.80, 53 ringgits, which I think is around maybe like 10 pounds. So it's not bad, but I don't think it's value for money in Malaysia. So we're gonna walk around a little bit more and I'm gonna head back to the hotel. So one thing I've realized here is there's a lot of halal restaurants. Uh, where we're staying, there were not a lot of halal restaurants in Bukit Bintang, but here, plenty of food stalls and restaurants all over the place. And so it's quite nice because you have more of a choice here. Uh, even though Malaysia is a Muslim country, there are some areas that you won't really find halal places. Like for example, Jalan Alor, which is very much known for its like Saturday night, Saturday night market food stall vibe. So yeah, uh, plenty of choices around here. So you might be coming here again. All right, some fireworks going on there. So I'm at the monorail station right now. And here's the ticket station. And then just remember to wear your mask, scan it here. All right, so we're finally out the monorail and we have finally reached Bukit Bintang. Bukit Bintang is a very, very flashy upmarket area and uh, like I like staying here but at the same time I kind of feel like it's very modern and, and sometimes you want a little bit of a kind of a Malaysian or of a traditional kind of feeling and you don't get that here as much as you do in like other areas so we're gonna try and find our way to the hotel now I kind of think I know where I am but I'm not 100% sure very, very flashy area as you can see so much going on here, look at this. So 
who knew there'd be a Syrian food place in Kuala Lumpur? Alright, so I'm finally back at the hotel. I'm staying at Mercury Hotel and this hotel only costs like £35 a night. It's a four-star hotel. It doesn't come with breakfast, but it's an amazing hotel. I'm gonna go and unwind, relax. It's been a hardcore day. Hope you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in another one. Remember to like, subscribe, and also switch on that notification bell button so that every time I upload a video, you'll get a notification. I'll see you guys in another video. Take care, and until next time, Assalamu Alaikum. Hi, my name is Javet Ahmed, and if you like my travel videos, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram and TikTok to stay up to date with my journeys across the world.